I saw a statistic recently that talked about how G fund transfers, money going into the G fund, was up over 200%. Now this is not really surprising. Federal employees are really nervous about what's going on in the markets and they're trying to prevent losses to their TSP. One of the ways people do that is by moving money to the G fund. The thought is the G fund is more conservative than the CSNI funds, even the F fund. And so moving it to the G fund allows it to slow down that decline. But be careful doing this. That same move in trying to protect your assets can be crushing to you later. And we'll discuss what I mean by that. Now, before we jump into things, if you've not been to our website, thefedcorner.com, you're really missing out. We do a lot more on there than we do by video on here. So make sure you go there, subscribe to the free newsletter that we have. I promise you won't regret it. And we don't send out hundreds of emails like a lot of places do. We send out one email every four to six weeks, which is just a snapshot on a variety of different things that we're talking about and creating content about so that you get to pick exactly what you're interested in. So back to the G Fund. By selling your investments inside the CSI and potentially even the F funds and moving it into the G Fund, you may be effectively making those losses from the top down to where we are today into a permanent loss. This is particularly true if you're not reinvesting the money more aggressively again at a lower amount than you were before. Those same losses that you were trying to protect against have now been memorialized by the fact that you've removed the opportunity for that money to regrow again if you're leaving it inside the G Fund. Now, the G Fund is an important part of the TSP, but it's important to understand how to best use it. Let's look at the investor emotion cycle again for the 50th time, I know you're getting tired of this graph, but it's so important that you understand the concepts that it has to offer. Right now, we're pretty much in the center of this graph, right in that middle section where we're looking at fear, desperation, and panic. If you remember the other videos that we've talked about this, this is the point where we begin to approach the point of maximum opportunity. If you move your money into the G Fund after you've already sustained losses in your portfolio, how is it going to recover those losses again? I want you to consider this. What if June 16th, which was not too long ago at the time of shooting this video, was actually the bottom of the market when the S&P 500 had hit somewhere around almost negative 24%. How do you know that it was the bottom? And if that's so, were you ready to deploy your cash when the markets were at the lowest they've been since the beginning of the year? And if you weren't ready, are you ready to right now? Let's look at history. In the summer of 82, when the markets were convinced that inflation had pretty much phased out or was at least dead enough, the markets shifted on a dime and closed the year out positive 20% from where it was to begin with. We can also look to a summer of a couple of years ago with the pandemic. After three weeks of decline, the market started shooting back up again. I'm not predicting that that's how fast we're gonna have a recovery. I actually don't think the recovery will be that fast, but the challenge is how can you wrestle with that emotion on the inside, watching things fall apart, and then put your money into something that's riskier? And Peter Lynch from Fidelity is famously quoted, the real way to make money in stocks is to not be scared out of them. Now, as investors, we can't control the markets, but we can control how we are investing in them and how we participate in them determines the short, mid and long term results of our financial picture. So how do you work up that courage to redeploy the capital in a way that you know it needs to be redeployed? Well, if you're close to retirement or maybe you're already retired, you have to have a strategy in place, specifically withdrawals. How are you taking money from your accounts? Which accounts are they coming from? So for example, if you have taxable accounts, you need to be looking at tax managing your assets so that you're maintaining your capital gains within reasonable basis. You also need to be considering tax loss harvesting, so maybe you can offset some of those losses. If you're drawing from retirement accounts, you need to consider how far you're pushing yourself into the next tax bracket. And if you're on Medicare, how that higher tax bracket now impacts your Medicare premiums. You see, there's a lot of different things that goes into a proper withdrawal strategy, a proper retirement plan. That's not just which investments do you need to be in. And if you don't have a plan for when the stock market declines, you could put yourself into a sticky position. It's not a matter of if the markets go down, it is a matter of when they will go down. The markets, the economy, those are cyclical in nature and will have ups as well as a period of cooling back down again and you'll see values continue to drop. 
And the key to this is you have to understand that that's a normal part of what it is to be an investor. Just because markets are cooling off doesn't mean that things are bad and the world is ending. You have to be able to be a successful investor during those periods of time as well, or potentially running out of money before you run out of time. So we're not saying don't use the G fund. We're saying make sure there's a good reason for it, make sure it's built into your plan, it's carefully thought of beforehand, and then it's not a knee-jerk reaction. Because what we're seeing, over 200% in increased transfers to the G Fund, those are knee-jerk reactions. Don't be part of the statistic, make sure you're using the G Fund strategically and all of your other assets accordingly. I can't promise many things, but I can promise you this. There will be another bear market once we are past this one. There will be probably another one and possibly a third and fourth one if you're just now getting around to retiring. They come around over time and you have to be prepared. And that is exactly when it will have paid off to having stayed true to the investment policy statement that you carefully put together. Those timelines, investments, modalities of how you accomplish things, those are the pillars from which you can build your financial success. And this plan should be designed to help you achieve a life of financial independence, free from the burden of uncertainty and proud of the legacy that you leave behind. Because it's not just your money, it's your future.